Good morning everyone, my name is Alessandro Mondini and I am a researcher at the Research Institute for the Geological Protection, a unit of the Italian National Research Council. Today I'm going to share some of the results of a critical literature review carried out with the authors listed here on the use of airborne and spaceborne star imagery to detect and map landslide failure. Where, with failure, we refer to the single most significant movement episode in the known or anticipated history of a landslide, in particular to the first formation of the fully developed rupture surface. We found out and reviewed 54 papers with digital object identifier, mostly published in journal with a clear remote sensing orientation. The number is limited but increasing. Overall, we examined 147 case studies in 32 nations, in all continents except Antarctica. Analysis of geographical location of 70 study areas shows that SAR imagery was almost successfully used in most of morphological, geological, seismic, meteorological, climate and land cover settings. The spatial distribution just partially overlaps the known earthquake induced landslide occurred between 2004-2017 that reported by Frode and Petley in 2018. Four main SAR-derived products have been used and I'm going to show you an example each. Single polarization, the figure on the right shows the backscattering coefficient change in a single polarization C-band Sentinel-1 images caused by a rock slide debris flow mud flow occurred in Villa Santa Lucia Los Lagos region, Chile, on 16 December 2017. Multi or fully polarization. Here, the quite famous uh, Taolin Mega slide trigger in Taiwan by the Chichi earthquake in 1999. See through a decomposition of fully polarimetric L band ISR image. Interferometry. Here, the image. At the upper right shows the deformation pattern of a landslide occurred in the Molise region, Italy, in between November 2014 and March 2015, detected in an interferogram obtained used again Sentinel-1. And the coherence on the left classified based on coherence changes measures for the 2015 Gorka Nepal earthquake using an L-band ALOS-2 data compared to the landslide error density for the event based on optical inventory. Two points can be of interest for the today's meeting, to discuss the completeness of the information that we have found out in the works and potential use of SAR in operational services. We try to quantify the abundance of information in each study, selecting eight information types, which we consider relevant to characterize the landslide event and the type of SAR product. Then we attributed to each article a completeness score equal to the number of information types from zero to eight. This is regardless of the quality of the information and the average score is 4.7. Quite surprisingly, a number of works did not report information like the landslide type, the number of landslides, the used products and its pre-processing. Furthermore, we noted that in some cases validation was missing or uncertain. There was a lack of homogeneity in the semantic use of the technical language. This makes very difficult, if not impossible, to compare and combine different solutions so as to indicate the best option in relationship to a new event to detect or map. Knowing systematically where and when landslides occur is of primary importance for the construction and validation of landslide early warning system and for emergency response. Part of the problem related to the timely detection of landslides lays in the difficulty of obtaining suitable optical imagery free of clouds. 
So there is a scope for using an all-weather sensor and it is probably not by chance that most of the study areas taken into a consideration in this work were located in areas with a high persistence of clouds. But the framework shows uh, some immaturity for an operational use, not only because there is a chronic lack of standards, but also because it is still unclear what are the real potentialities, advantages and disadvantages of the different techniques. In fact, experiments are rarely repeated in different areas or with different images of techniques. A partial justification can be attributed to the lack of suitable images, at least in the past, to carry out adequate experiments using different bands, resolutions and geometries. In fact, SAR images have been mostly acquired and used for different purposes and then with different requirements, for example to monitor slow processes like slow moving landslide. For a full exploitation of the framework, one of the things that we think is missing most is a real interest in landslide detection and mapping instead of proposing new and fancy methods. We have great expectations uh, for the current and future missions. They promise data with unprecedented spatial and temporal resolutions. But this must be assisted by the adoption of flexible data acquisition programs and distribution policies. Promising is the integration of sub-products with other data including optical images or seismic data. This research has been carried out in the framework of the Landslide project, funded by the Share Science for Humanitarian Emergencies and Resilience. Thank you very much for your attention.